It's a little lean, but this tripod's annoying. I don't want <laughs> to get another one. Okay, so uh, as I said, we're doing Stokes' theorem today, so that will give you a fair shot at the bonus problem. Um, you'll also notice that Stokes' theorem also involves a line integral, so it's another reason to know your line integrals. Um, <laughs> I could just be mean and not ask you to do line integrals, and then you'd be like, Jesus, sick you son of and yes, uh, even though I don't teach triple integrals, you will need to know how to set up triple integrals. There was a problem. I forget what we, we actually did it, but um, on the finals where I like, they gave you an object, they asked you to just compute the triple integral of x squared plus y squared plus z squared um, and compute one of them. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put a problem like that on the test. Table. So you will need to know how to set up things in it's cylindrical or spherical. Like, I won't force you to do one way or the other, but you should be comfortable with either because the situation might call for one or the other. Um, so we're going to do Stokes there. And what you can think of this guy is, is it's really a higher dimensional analog. Well, I'm going to talk about how all these theorems work out together at the end anyway. There's a higher dimensional analog to Green's theorem. All right, so you might have recalled Green's. Where does this guy work? Two dimension? It's only in two dimensions. This guy works in the xy plane. Right, so it only works in two dimensions. So if I have a curve in the plane, a piecewise smooth closed curve, and I have a, a region in the plane, then Green's theorem tells me that computing the work integral around that curve is equal to computing this double integral of this thing. Now, Stokes' theorem seeks to generalize that a little bit. We're not going to be stuck to the plane anymore. We are going to be moving in three dimensions. The difference is, now when you're looking at Stokes, the difference is now, we're in free space. However, we're still talking about some 2D region bounded by a 1D curve. So we're going to have a two-dimensional surface hovering in space. And I'm going to define its boundary curve, the curve just around the edges of the surface. Call that the C. So now I'm in three space, but I'm still looking at some two-dimensional region that has the boundary of a piecewise smooth closed curve. Right, so it's kind of like I'm taking Green's theorem, I want to put it in three space. And so now the equation in Stokes' theorem is going to tell us that the line integral around that curve, meaning to take the work integral around a one-dimensional curve in three-dimensional space, where you're bounded by, you're bounding a two-dimensional surface, that guy is going to be equal to, does anyone know what that double integral? Right. So that's actually a surface integral over a vector field. The vector field that you're doing is the curl of the given function. So let's actually just state that precisely. Right. So Green's theorem, we live in 2D, and we want to figure out the work integral around some piecewise smooth closed curve that bounds a two-dimensional region in 2D. But if I lift up that region in 3-space, doing the same thing becomes a surface integral over a vector field. So right now, the equation is what you really have to remember. I'm just going to write these other things down as a formality. But in this class, the, these conditions will always be met anyway. So that's just me stating, oh, it has to be piecewise smooth, you have to be able to differentiate, blah, 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 all that stuff. So this is Stokes' state. Um, let S be an oriented piecewise smooth. surface 
in R3 bounded by a piecewise smooth closed curve C. And let F be a vector field. R3 with continuous just has to be on some open region in R3 that contains the entire surface, but let's just put it on R3. Then, finally, according to Stokes' theorem, this equation holds. So under these conditions, there's another way to compute the work integral. The integral around the curve C, f dot dr, will be equal to the double integral over S of curl F dot ds. Notice that this is a surface integral over a vector field. The left side is a line integral. So it's kind of like taking Green's theorem in three space. And that's basically what the e equation says. Now, we know how to do this by now. And we learned how to do this last time. Right, we just had the f dot ds, but the same principle applies, just instead of f, use the curl of f, which we know how to compute that. But then everything um, will follow directly here. Like, how can you translate this? Uh, you would put, so instead of ds, you put the normal vector times da, da and uh, s would change into C, curl F, and there will be D. Some region D, right? Um, because this is really the double integral over S of the curl of F dot product, the unit normal times this, right? Remember that. Because that's your DS here, right? That interpretation, by the way, now that I'm on it, will help you. There are some homework problems which going all the way down here would make the problem very difficult. You have to stop here. And it would just be like, it would be easier by doing that. Right? So that, that was things like where there's a plane and there's a circle in the plane. But obviously, if you project that circle down to the xy plane, it's not a circle anymore. It would be an ellipse. And it's kind of hard to come with that equation. This interpretation here would be nicer. Because you can use the cylindrical coordinates in the s universe as opposed to in the xy universe. Um, but anyway, that's it. So this is set up in the same way. Our normal vector, again, that's set up in the same way we've been doing before. There are two main ways to do it. You can parametrize and do the cross product of the partials, or you can do that formula in the case where you have a scalar function that describes your surface. Wait, 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 wait. Don't you Stokes theorem also, I'm not going to prove it for you, but it happens to be the easiest one of the fundamental theorems to prove. You can pretty much do it computationally. You can literally just plug in the generic variables here and just crunch out the numbers and simplify stuff and, and it kind of falls in your lap. The, the other ones, like Green's theorem and Divergence theorem, they're a little bit more complicated to prove. But. Oh, Professor, I forgot to ask about that. Is Divergence theorem and the curl and all that stuff going to be on the test? No. So the, okay, so the, test stops, the test stops at uh, no, surface no. interest. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I mean that, what was it, 13.4, 13.5 or something? At the greens, we learned curl and divergence. Yes. So that's going to be on the test. Sure, yeah. I can ask you to do the curl of something, yes. Curl and divergence are on <coughs> And especially if you want to do the bonus, and there's Stokes in the bonus, that you need to know how to do a curl for that also. So yeah, you should know how to compute a curl 
and a divergence of a vector field, you need to know how to do a line integral, and especially the oriented one, you need to know how to set up triple integrals in all three coordinate systems, and you need to know how to do surface integrals. That's what the next test is covering. Okay. Um, not much else to say here. We'll just jump into some examples. Oh, may, there's one other thing I want to say. And this comes from carefully reading. Okay. <laughs> so now, I want you to note, because this could make your life easier if you, if you can read problems carefully. Um, Don't S is a, is a surface, meaning it's a two-dimensional mathematical object bounded by C. And that allows us Stokes allows us to compute this guy by doing this guy. Now what, you're, what you should read into that is the following. Let's say I have a curve C here. Right? Um, and it's the boundary of one surface that's like over here. Doing its things, just a surface, whatever. This is your S, let's call it surface one. There's another surface below it that shares the same boundary with that curve, right? <coughs> call that S2. Okay, right? Now, if I want to compute the work around that curve, let's say with respect to S1, what would I do? Uh, you would do the curl F. Curl of F. Find the normal vector. Well, you, you'd compute this, right? But with respect to S1. Uh -huh. Also. And that would work by Stokes theorem, assuming this is piecewise smooth and all that. But also, I could look at that same curve, but instead choose S2. Either surface here would satisfy the conditions of Stokes theorem. In other words, you can choose surfaces. You have a choice, including a choice that might not be present at the time. Yeah. Wouldn't uh, the normal of S2 be the negative of the normal when, when you're doing S1? No, not necessarily. The, the surfaces are completely different. They're doing different things. But it, are you taking <coughs> the normal from the, the shadow on the C, right? Or is it from, or is it the normal of out of, like coming out of S? Are you talking about the right side? Yeah. In, in the DS, well, right hand rule would, would indicate that that normal here is that for the first surface. Yeah. And if I'm doing the right hand rule for the bottom surface, what would that look like? I guess it's going inward, right? Okay. Is it going inward? Uh, sure. So what is the problem? Oh, no, I, I wasn't sure if it goes inward or outward. So the normals would be up what you're going So the normals are the same direction? No, you can't say that. Depends on the surfaces. I can give you an easy example. Think of the upper hemisphere. Let S to be the plane, the xy plane, and let s1 be the sphere of radius 1, what would the normal vector to that look like? Uh, negative fx. Like minus fx, minus fy, positive 1, whereas this one would be 0, 0, negative 1, 
right? These aren't negatives of each other. In fact, they look very different. The components here are zero. Components here would be non-zero. But the work still comes out to be the same? But the work will be the same. Okay. Okay. Now, this is, this is kind of what I'm telling you. Stokes' theorem tells us how to compute this guy. This is the important part of Stokes' theorem. But it's saying you can compute it by doing a certain surface integral over a vector field. Now, the only thing that you need for this to be a way to compute that is for S to be a surface bounded by C. So that means you can choose any surface that is bounded by the curve I give you, and this will always work out. It's always going to be true. F dot dr, this will, these will both have the same value. So it means that literally any surface I pick, these will necessarily be the same value. Even if the functions look different, even if the normals look different, it does not matter. They will always give you the same value regardless of the surface you pick. I can pick another surface, S3, doing the vector, the doing curl f dot ds over S3 would give me the same value. Another surface bounded by this, S4, doing the vector, doing this integral over S4 would give me the same value. They are all necessarily equal. Now, how you can use that to your advantage is looking back at this example. Let's say I didn't tell you about the xy plane. I just described a problem to you that says S is the surface that is the upper hemisphere of the unit sphere, right? Compute the work around the curve in the xy plane. Now, you have an option to do this way if, if, I, if you're doing the double integral side, right? You have the option of saying, okay, let's figure out the normal vector here and then setting all that up, blah, 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 blah. But you could just as easily say, you know what? You never mentioned it, but it's valid for me to consider S as the, the surface Z equals zero. That is also another surface that is bounded by that curve, which has a much easier normal vector to work with. By Stokes' theorem, doing it with that is definitely going to give me the same answer as doing it with that. See what I'm kind of saying? You can choose whatever surface you want as long as the curve you care about is a boundary for that surface, right? Whether I mention it or not, you can choose it. You can say, I choose to work with this surface. Yeah, I know you told me this surface, but it's difficult to work with. I choose to work with this one. It's easier and it's going to give me the same answer anyway. And could you also do the work integral over that boundary curve if it turns out to be easier? Work integral over, they have the same boundary curve. As far as the boundary curve is concerned, it's this circle. So like, could you do the f dot dr integral around that circle? Yes. Okay. I, but I could do it by either looking at S1 or S2. Right, let's say I care about doing the right side. Right? I can do it over S1 or I can do it over S2 and they'll give me the same answer. So you can kind of choose, pick and choose your surfaces. Right, so Stokes theorem actually gives you, it has some sort of options built into it. Like, what are, you can pick an easy surface. If the surface you're dealing with happens to be complicated, you can pick an easy surface. Right, and this is, this is, this is a very useful theory um, for a lot of reasons. This, like Benito was telling me the other day when she was in, what was that class you said? It was nothing but f dot dr? Oh, mechanics. It's nothing so, but um. Yeah, so she's doing mechanics, and it's like, it's all f dot dr. And she's like, but it's not as difficult as in this class because all the answers are easy. The thing is, this is why it's easy. In the background, what the physicists do is they always pick a nice thing mm -hmm. that they know is always there, so the integral is never complicated. Uh -huh. You just set it up, but you know, oh, just pick this and it's going to work out nice. Your answer is going to always look like this. Don't worry about it. This is why. Right? Because with this kind of theorem to compute a work integral, you can choose something easy where the answer is always going to be nice. It's always going to be like minus one times something. It's always going to be like a constant or some, something silly. Okay. So Stokes' theorem, just by the way it's set up, it gives us the ability to compute a work integral in, that, in, in a possibly much easier way. So, so that's one thing you can have in mind. So even if there's a surface that's not mentioned, but you know it's easy to work with and it happens to be bounded by the same curve I'm mentioning, you can choose to do it over that surface. It's not going to be wrong. Okay. So now let's go on to another one.
okay, so I'm asking you to do the work integral for this vector field. Minus y squared, z comma x. And usually if I'm giving a test, I'll ask you to do it both ways, but here I'm, I'm going to emphasize doing it the, the double integral way um, because I would assume we all know how to deal with this by now. All right, so you see something like that. What do you do? What's the first thing you do? We'll draw it. Okay, what does it look like? Yes, but how, how do we do it? 3, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, and 0, 0, 6. How do you get that? Set two points equal to 0. Set two variables equals zero to, at the same time, solve for the other one. So if you set y and z equals zero, you get x equals three, so I know the intersect here at three. Set x and z equals zero, you get y equals three, so it intersect there at three. And set these two equals zero, you get z equals six. So it's this part of the plane here. Right? Now C is the boundary, right? So C consists of C1 union C2 union C3, which I can just name these randomly like that. So if you want to do the line integral, like f dot dr, you could do three line integrals. Right? And there might be cases where you'd want to do that or you have to do that. Um, but I, I'm interested in doing the right side. Okay. But by Stokes here, We know that this integral f dot dr is just going to be the double integral of curl f dot ds. So instead of doing three single variable line integrals, I can get away with doing one surface double integral over a vector field. Um, in particular, the vector field is the curl of f. So at this point, I would just I would hope everyone knows how to do this. You parameterize each line, you find the dr, you plug them in, and parameterizing a straight line should be no problem at this point. Um, but so let's focus on the right side. Let's actually work on the surface integral part. Okay. So you see this, the first thing I would do is draw this picture so you can understand what's going on in the situation. Um, we care about this surface here, which is the plane. By Stokes' theorem, I know that I can compute the work integral by doing this surface integral. So now that I know I, I want to use the surface integral, what do I do? Normal vector is going to be the first thing I want to find. How, what's the normal vector? Uh, so in terms of the z first? Sure. So it's going to be 2, 2, 1. 2, 2, 1. Um, but yes, yeah, so you have to look at this solved in terms of z. Uh, you have 6 minus 2x minus 2y, you do the partials, right? Mm -hmm. We could also read it off. Um, one thing that you have to be careful with reading this off is that the magnitude of this guy matters. Um, so, for example, if I had put something like uh, 6, 6, 3, you could not put 6, 6, 3 here. Why? Because the magnitude of that would be different from the magnitude of this. It has to coincide with the formula. You would have to put 663, and then but you'd have to normalize it. You would know that according to the formula, I should be getting 1 here, so I have to divide this entire thing by 3 to get that. There's like an extra step that you'd have to do. So it's not good enough to just read off the normal. Huh? Can you change it to unit No. I mean, change it to a vector where the z component is 1, specifically. Because, because I know that this is the formula. That's the formula. It has to be a 1 here, which means if I read the normal vector and it has a 3, it doesn't match the formula. So I would need to divide by whatever that is in order to get it in that form. 
But yeah, in this case, if I, I read it off, it, it's the same two to one. But in general, you do want to think of it as solving for z, finding the partials, plugging into that formula. Okay. Um, how do I know that's the right normal vector? Okay. Is this positive z? Going toward positive z. You're saying that yeah, with, with right so you're looking at from above. It's right hand rule, right? That's that's the thing. How do you know which way the normal vector should be pointed? We know that if we're looking down, it should be going counterclockwise. Right. So my normal vector, according to right hand rule, I put my fingers in the way that my curve is going, stick my thumb up. That means my normal vector should be pointing up. In particular, that means my z component should be positive. So this is the correct normal. If for some reason I did the right hand rule and it was pointing down, I need to take the negative of this. Professor? Yes. Why do you put your right hand like since on the surface? It's, it's going counterclockwise, so it's put it yeah. on the Put it surface. on the curve. Your your fingers of your right hand should be moving in the direction of the curve. Okay. But what side? Is it the white side or the black well the colored side? Like the white side, the colored side. What side? It's when viewed from above. But your hand is never going to be a book, so it's like if you go. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Because like the, the right hand, I'm trying to like visualize how this works. So when you shake, when you're, I'm looking at you, so you're facing the same way as me. So your hand always has to be like this, like a waitress, like always. No, you put way. your hand on the curve. But you see, now surface. your hand is this way, so the black side is up. So which side for the right hand rule to work? What side of the hand has to be? Are you on? The side I'm looking from. The side I'm looking at, my hand has to be on that side. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. You said you're looking down, but then your hand yes. is up. So which part of the surface I'm going to see? I'm going to see the part that's facing this way. So my hand has to be on top. No, oh, you're direction. saying that you're looking at so the thumb has to face you? No, your no. finger has to go with the direction. If the direction is like that, so it's... The finger has to go with the direction. Professor. So you have to go that way, okay, I see what okay. you're saying. Around this way, okay. Do you? I didn't know. I, I get it now, but I okay. know everybody... Imagine this <laughs> tabletop is the plane. Okay. Right? Yeah. I have a curve that's going around in this direction on the plane. Because when I'm looking down, it's like that. Right? Okay. So this is the part of the face that's facing me. Mm -hmm. Put my hand on that part. Okay. okay. Now if someone said, looking from below, this is not the part that's facing me anymore. I would have to be under the table. In which case I would put my right hand on the bottom. Because that would be the part that's facing me. Yeah. You put your hand on top of the part of the surface that's facing me. So in that case, you are looking at it from the bottom. You are not like... <laughs> So if I was looking from the bottom, no, I'm no, doing no, the right hand rule, the, the normal vector. I'm talking about down. that surface. Like, you're putting the right hand, but you're looking at it from the bottom, no? Or no, I'm looking from the top, down. Oh, OK. That's why it's Which means my hand is on top of the table, Okay. All because right. I'm looking from the top. Okay. If I was looking from the bottom, my hand would be on the bottom of the table. It didn't make sense in physics, and it don't make sense now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just put your hand yeah. on the part of the table that's facing you. The part that you're seeing, that's where your hand no, is. No, but when we're drawing these, like, in the middle of the yeah. test, and I'm trying to look for the vector, then my hand is not on the bottom of the top of anything but a sheet of paper. So at that point, I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> this is a Calc 3 issue. I mean, you really have to go back to, to talk about R3. Right. They're, they're very helpful techniques. You can imagine the corner of the room as your x-axis, your y-axis, your z-axis, and there's a roof coming down over here. Your hand is on top of it. Okay. Right. As opposed to if you're looking up here, your hand would be like this. Oh, okay. I see but I'm looking from down here, my hand is like this. That makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's not three. That's not what <laughs> That makes more okay, sense. Let's start. <laughs> Literally day one on Cal 3, that's what your professor would have done. Imagine the corner of the room, that's your ex. Come on, come on. Are you teaching Cal 3 in the fall? No. <laughs> okay, so now let's do the problem. This is our ethics. Okay, now that I've done that, now what? I found the normal. What else do I need to find? Del cross L. Do, do not cross out. Yeah. 
curl. curl. I need to do the curl because curl. that's a part of the formula. Yeah. So now I want to do the curl of F. That is going to be the IJK partial with respect to X, partial with respect to Y, partial with respect to Z. Make sure you write this kind of D instead of that kind of D. Does They're that different. Really matter? It matters. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, you're you're still... taking points for that, Professor? Yes. Yeah. Wow. You took my whole point for the quiz. <laughs> Your sloppiness got you in this mess. I have to do anti-sloppiness to get you out of this mess. Wow. <laughs> OK, so now you just put the components here. She got to express Z in terms of X and Y, right? Uh, no. So now what? I is zero. Okay, do the determinant. So it's the partial with respect to y of this, which is zero, minus that. So that's minus one. Do the middle. That's one minus zero, but you take a negative. This one, zero. Uh, that should be two y. So that's the curve. You'd write the z in terms of x and y when you're plugging it into the integral, not at this point. OK, so we have our normal vector. We have our curl. Now what? You're going to do the dot product of this guy. Curl f dot ds. You just recognize that's going to be uh, curl f dot product with n dA, where my dA is coming, I erased it. And again, here you have choices, but I'm going to set it up so that my projection region is in the xy plane um, for sentimental reasons. Um, so I'm now looking at it from this. The x was, this was 3, 3, and 6. Right? So here I'm seeing 3, here I'm seeing 3. What's the equation of this line? Minus x plus three. Negative three minus x plus three. Y equals three minus x. Okay, how did you get that? Uh, in independent slope of the line. That's too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have time. Remember, we have, we have to do like three line integrals. I don't have time for that. Like, what's the quickest way to get to that line? Intersection. Intersection of what? Plus three. Plus three. Plus three. Why is that? Yeah, three minus six. Three minus six. Yeah. Sure. What's, what's the? <laughs> you can't where did this line? Where did this line come from? From the equation, not plane, no. From the equation of the plane. Uh, what was the plane equation? Z equal to zero. You just set z equal zero in the plane equation. That would be the easiest way to get it, oh, really? right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So if you have this random line, <laughs> you doing y two minus y x two minus x one. A lot half you can do algebra. You're gonna mess no, just plug in z equals zero in the equation of the plane. That's the guy. Yeah, okay, you're not wrong. <laughs> so I'm not. I'm not wrong. I know. That's the sad part. This is the part that no one laughs about. Like I'm not wrong when I say that. I know. So nice. Okay. Uh, uh, what would this give us? <laughs> it was three minus x. Yes. Three minus x. Okay. How is this? So now, how do you set up that region? Let's talk double integrals here. What is your x going between? What is your y going between? Uh, zero to three. Zero to three. And then zero, zero to three, 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 three minus x. And then zero to three minus x. Which means my dA becomes what? Uh, dy dx. dy dx. Not dx dy. It has to be dy dx because our integral setup, the constants are always on the far outside. Okay. So. Professor, do you recommend it always being done, these kind of stuff, where you draw it out first, then find the bounds, and then. Yes. Like even for like the, the stuff of the test, always just like follow yes. that flow? Okay. Yes. No. So now the, the double integral over S is just going to be 
0 to 3 for the x and 0 to 3 minus x. And I'm going to dot product these two. Let me just actually write it. Minus 1, minus 1, 2y, dot product with 2, 2, 1. Are the test problems going to be like this? Like this one? Yes. <laughs> just wondering. Yeah. This one seems I feel like everyone, the everyone, everyone thinks I'm trying to trick them. Yeah, You're out to get us. This <laughs> is easier than the homework. Well, it is much easier than the homework. Yeah. yeah. And the test? <laughs> yeah, the test is much harder. The homework is not meant to be easy. Why not? <laughs> that's, not that's not the point of giving you homework. Let's give them something easy to make them, give them something to do. That's not, that's not <laughs> what you give homework. <laughs> okay. So now this would be. 0 to 3, 0 to 3 minus x, and you just the dot product. So that's minus 2, minus 2 is minus 4 plus 2y dy dx. <coughs> and you put this in the oven and you get minus 9. Okay. But you would have to show. <laughs> I don't know. Could you use the symbol lab in the room? <laughs> yeah, you want to let us do this on the test or no? <laughs> how how do you like know that that's minus 9? <laughs> no, I don't mean minus 9, I mean just this method, this more nice, easy method. Like if something comes on a test, I, you'd have to do it both ways. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, like I mean, would you be able to just like skip out on, you know, like I mean, doing the line integral all together and just use Stokes? No. Oh, okay. I tried. <laughs> yeah, so if you look at the review problems, there are problems that says, okay, compute this by doing part A, doing the line integral, part B, using a double integral. Why? I'm going to give you a question. He's mean, that's why. <laughs> so unnecessary. Can we also um, take, take um, DA as the, like, the y, z, y plane? And you also have to remember the position I'm in. I'm not writing your final, so I'm not just teaching you for me. I need to teach you for whatever some other person might think of asking you. Would you be prepared for that? Well, that other person so, gives the exam before the exam, so you should do that too. That'd be nice. What other person are we talking about? Don't Bach write it still? Well, he's not no, right. Bach is not the oh. expert anymore. Okay, forget it. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I, I assume we can all get through that, so that would be that. I believe that was minus 9 last time I did it. Okay, let's do another example. Verify Stokes' theorem for I don't know if you can be able to see this. F is equal to two z comma x comma y squared. So we can't just take the easy way out. You want us to do both ways and show the right. So if it says verify, it means you need to show this side is equal to that side. So you have to do both sides. Okay. 
And yes, on the test, I'm going to ask you to do both sides of Green's theory. So nothing up my sleeve. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to ask you this. Not that it makes a difference, but I'm telling you. Johnson, are you still going to be slow? What? <laughs> there was a problem on the first test. You know that one where you had to apply the fundamental theorem for line integrals? Oh, yes. Poor B. You <laughs> I realized it like two minutes before and there was no yeah, time to do Yeah, this. I told you guys in class, I'm like, I'm going to give you a problem that's going to be needlessly complicated. I'm not even going to give you a lot of space to work it out because there's going to be an easy way to work it out. Don't set up the line integral, don't parameterize anything, you just use the endpoints. What did most people do? They try to parameterize everything, they try to say, can I have an extra booklet? Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, Javon, your test was hard. No, I, I told you what I was going to do. It was very predictable. If you paid attention, you would have known, oh, this is the question he was talking about. It would be obvious that was what I was talking about. Anyway, let's move on. First thing, what do we do? Draw it. Draw it. Also, to go back to Benita's question, it is not a coincidence that whenever we're doing a problem, I always kind of do it in the same order. Draw it first, then find the normal, then do this, then do that. You just started doing problems before you've given us definitions on definitions. <laughs> no, we've done many examples. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's beneficial to do it um, when you're practicing, you, you should be doing it that way. Like, whenever you're doing a problem, do the steps in the same order all the time. Cognitively, that's better. You'll be faster, and it'll th things will flow easier, and you won't get as confused. Okay, so that's what our, we look like. Um, so, verify Stokes there means um, we want to verify this equation. Let's start with the line integral. Let's see what we have here. Let's do the f dot dr. Okay, go. What's the first thing when you're doing f dot dr? C is a circle of radius 2. Right, you need to find r, which is, it's just this circle in here, which we know, so based on the, the previous thing, just plug in z equals 0, you get x squared plus y squared plus 4. Two. So this here is x squared plus y squared equals 4. This is the surface z is equal to 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And so what is the parameterization for that? 2 cosine t, 2 sine t, and then that would be just 2, no, 4. Z? Yeah. Wouldn't it be 2? 0. Why could it not be a z? Zero. It's T. Isn't it? No, it's T. Well, no. yeah, I'm asking you, why could it not be Z? Because we're parameterizing with T. Yeah. Using huh? T. Because we're parameterizing in terms of T. It doesn't make sense for it to be Z. Okay, but let's say you didn't know that. Minus R. Let's say someone just wrote the R and didn't write a T. How do you know that that couldn't be right? Because there can only, the, there can only be one the variable. Plane. There can only be one variable. Oh. So T, C is it's a curve, it's a one-dimensional thing. The moment you put another letter there, you're wrong. It has to be only one variable. So if I start out writing T's, that's the only variable I'm allowed to use. It's a curve. Once I throw another variable there, it's now a surface, which is not C. Okay. What, what goes there, though? 4 minus cos squared minus sine squared? Zero. 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 Why zero? Why, Why zero? <laughs> Why zero? Because Why zero? Because it's in the xy plane. It's in the xy oh. plane. My circle is here at the bottom on the floor in the xy plane. My z is zero in the xy plane. If I, if I were to put 4, that's you saying the circle is hovering around z equals 4, which it's not. It's on the floor. It's on the xy plane. So that whole parameter is in the xy plane. So my z is zero. Then. 
that whole thing applies for the xy circle? The xy plane is always z equals zero. No, I mean just R of T always applies to the X, Y. and Well, in this case, I don't mean always and forever, but no, we, it's we, always we, projection. No. For this situation when you're doing the F dot DR. There's no for this situation. Draw the picture, you'll know where the circle is, and you do that. Okay, so what's the next thing? Uh, DR. DR, which is going to be... Next thing. F of RT. F of RT. And what does that mean you do? You plug in this XYZ into that. So that would give us what? Zero. Two cosine T. Four sine squared. And what's the next thing? Just dot f with dr. You dot product this with this. So you multiply this by that, that's zero. Multiply this by that, that's four cosine squared. Multiply this by that, that's zero. So that's our guy. Limits. Uh, zero to two pi. Zero to two pi. It's the, it's the full circle. And you can use just the uh, half angle formula here. So that ends up being two. 1 plus cosine 2t two t, and t, t and 0 and 2 pi. And this part is going to give me 0. So this guy is going to give me uh, 4. Oh, I forgot to ask. Um, what Are we sure that this curve is going in this direction? Yeah. How are we sure? Oriented upwards. oriented upwards, being normal vectors point up, what does that mean for the curve? Right hand rule. Okay. So I know my normal vector should have. Um, so I know I should be going counterclockwise. So it's going to be 4 pi. And, oh, verify. So let's do the right side. Remember that f? Let's do the right side. So when we do the right side, we should get the same thing. So now let's do the double integral of curl f dot ps. Okay, so what's the first thing? Normal vector. Okay. Normal. How do we find the normal? Did you use the formula? The sure. negative fx. Uh, which way should the normal be pointing? Upwards. Upwards. Okay, so we're doing that. And so now what? Question before you continue. Mm -hmm. You have chosen like the bottom one where z is equal to zero? Yeah. We could have done that. I, when you first said verify, I thought you meant prove that the bottom surface and the top surface come out to the same work. That would be verified. Stokes' theorem is this equation. <laughs> oh, it's not that uh, work from any side is the same? No, Stokes' theorem says the work is this. So if I say verify Stokes here and verify this equation. That, so you have to do a line integral and do this surface integral and then show that they're the same. Now in this case, this was the surface that was given to you, right? Now you could go through and you could find the normal based on that surface and do uh, 2x, 2y, comma 1. However, the plane z equals 0, that disk is also bounded by that same surface. Right? So this surface z equals 0 is a viable option here. I don't have to use the surface I was given. I can think of a much easier surface. Take the xy plane itself as the surface with the same boundary. Stokes theorem says I will get the same thing. So I can just jump right into 0, 0, positive 1 here, which is going to cut down on calculations. OK, so what's the next thing? Curl, okay. Find the curl. Professor? Yes. Wait, your normal vector, why is it 0, 0, 1? Because I'm using the normal, I'm using this normal. So, okay. You are using a surface x squared plus y squared equal to 4? 
No, I'm using z equals zero. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, professor, yes. Isn't the um, point out um, point outwards means the normal is point out, so and the bottom is supposed to be out? I never said point outwards. Read the question. It said point up. It used upwards, not outwards. So be very careful. Read, read properly. It was upwards, not outwards. So the normal vector isn't pointing down, it's pointing up. So if you say it's outwards, then now it will point down, right? Yeah. Okay. Professor? Yes. Uh, would it be the same thing choosing uh, that surface z equal to right? 4 minus x squared minus y squared? Or would it be different? What? If uh, I choose, if if I chose this as the surface and yeah. do that normal vector, I would get exactly the same answer. Same answer, okay. It would be more work, but it would but be the same answer. Okay. Which I don't think, it won't terribly be difficult to do with that here. Um, it, it, will, it will kind of be the brain dead thing to do, just do that and just uh, go through the work. <coughs> but knowing Stokes' theorem allows you to choose a better surface. As long as it has the same, as long as you're working with the same boundary curve. So I'm going to do that because it's going to make my life a lot easier. So the curl of this is going to be 2y, comma, 0. 2, comma, 1. But now when I dot product these two, curl f dot ds now become dot n. Now becomes 0, 0, 1. Which if, if I had like 2x, 2y here, I wouldn't get that. I would have like 4y squared and 4x plus 1. Then everyone would complain, Javon, the exams are so hard. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but here we're just integrating 1. So this means the double integral over s is just going to be the double integral over d of 1 dA, which happens to be what? Uh, pi r squared, so... Pi r squared, the area of the circle. And the r was? 2. So it's 4 pi. You get the same answer. Is that 2 or z equals 2? Z equals 2. Now when I say compute this using Stokes theorem, what, are, what am I actually asking you to do? Right side of it? To do the surface integral, right? Meaning don't do this directly. Because we could set up this line integral in the computer, but I wouldn't be using Stokes theorem. I would just be doing what we learned back in 13.3 or whatever. So I actually want you to do the double integral here. Um, so what's the first thing you do? Just 
Right. Draw. Mm -hmm. What is this? Con. 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 And then it's equal to two. And so it's like, it's like, going to slice off the top of this cone here at the level two. And C is the intersection. So where is C? Is that like circle? circle. It's this circle here. And let's just say positive orientation here, just to use. So we're going around there. So I want you to do the, the double integral, but just for fun. Because what if I were parameterizing C, what would that look like? Now you see why exactly, yeah. zero, the difference between having a zero and a two? Mm -hmm. Right, because here my circle is not in the xy plane, it's in the plane z equals two. Okay. That's not what we're doing anyway, right? I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah. So, how do we go about this then? Find the normal vector. <clears throat> what do you choose for the normal? We could. Again, could you use the top? I would use the top, yeah. <laughs> right? There are two surfaces to worry about here. There's the given cone, but there's also z equals 2. Either one is an option because they have the same boundary. So I would be nice and choose the easier one. So I'm going to do Stokes theorem with this one. In which case, my normal vector is easily just 0, 0, 1. I need no computation for that. I don't waste any time. Now I'm going to have to find my curl f. It's a conservative vector field, it's irrotational, so I know that the work around a closed curve should be zero. Right? So this also falls in line with the theorems that we had before. Right? So even if you had this, if you knew ahead of time that this guy is a conservative vector field, which this you could memorize as a conservative vector field, it's the radial vector, it's a very important vector field. Um, you couldn't know ahead of time, the answer is going to be zero because that's conservative. So literally any closed curve, the answer would have been zero here. And it falls right in line with Stokes' theorem. So you can actually use Stokes' theorem and prove the fundamental theorem of line integrals coming here from that angle. But it's usually that you learn this afterwards. Um, stop there. Test is on Thursday. I can meet people after 3 p.m. tomorrow for office hours. See you guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.